Good morning, guys. Uh, welcome to your first actual lecture of the class, uh, where I'm going to be just talking you through some things. Uh, we're going to be talking about the functions of cells that have to do with energy, uh, which is photosynthesis and cellular respiration. Um, it's all about how cells capture and release energy. Now, I'm recording this so that you guys can watch it at your own pace, uh, so that while you're taking the notes, you can pause, rewind, whatever you need to do to make sure you get all of your notes. Cells need energy to stay alive. Cells need a constant supply of energy. Animals get their energy from food, while plant cells get their energy from sunlight. Chemical energy is the energy stored in the bonds between atoms of every molecule. Well, it's really important for cells getting energy, that chemical energy, because even plants, which get their energy from the sunlight, they can't directly use that sunlight energy. They have to have chemical energy. A major energy source for most cells is stored in a sugar molecule called glucose. Why do we need energy in any case? Well, when you need energy, your cells release chemical energy from glucose. And your cells might need energy for any number of reasons. To reproduce the cells, copy the cells. Um, they might need energy to repair some damage to the cells. Uh, they might need energy for growth. <clears throat> um, but of course, uh, a perfect example in humans for why we need energy is movement, right? When you move, muscle cells release chemical energy from glucose by breaking bonds to move your legs. So they break those bonds in the glucose and release chemical energy, and that's how you can move. The more you move, the more glucose your muscle cells need. So, you know, the more you move, the more energy you need, so the more glucose you need. You eat food to restore the glucose supply in muscles. Remember, glucose is sugar. So eating food is how you get that glucose. Your, the sugar in your food, which isn't always like sugar, sugar. We're not talking about junk food. It's also carbohydrates. Uh, plants transform the energy in sunlight into the chemical energy in glucose in their chloroplast. And the process that plant cells use to change the energy from sunlight into nutrients for the plant, into that glucose, that sugar, uh, is called photosynthesis, as we learned on Friday. Uh, the source of energy for all organisms ultimately comes from the sun. Uh, just about all organisms. There are some organisms deep, deep down in the ocean that get their energy uh, a different way. We'll learn more about that in eighth grade. Uh, but for Almost all organisms, the source of energy ultimately comes from the sun, um, whether it's a plant which gets the energy directly from the sun or an animal that gets its energy from eating the plant that got the energy from the sun or uh, a person that eats an animal that ate a plant that got its energy from the sun. It all ultimately comes from the sun. Photosynthesis, as we learned on Friday, takes place in the chloroplasts of plant cells. Chloroplasts contain chlorophyll, which traps the sunlight. So chlorophyll is a pigment. It is a green pigment, and that is why uh, most plants are green. Um, and that green pigment helps trap the sunlight to um, start the process of photosynthesis. So how exactly does photosynthesis work? This is probably what you've all been wondering about. So you start with your starting materials, which are carbon dioxide, water, and energy from the sun. So carbon dioxide, water, and energy from the sun go into the plant. Uh, the process works like this. The carbon dioxide and water enter the plant cell's chloroplasts. Meanwhile, the chlorophyll is capturing energy from the sun. And then the products in the chloroplast, you get these um, chemical reactions, and the products are glucose and oxygen. And of course, oxygen is a waste product. Uh, the plants don't want that. They release that. And uh, that's why plants give off oxygen, which is good for us because we breathe oxygen. All right, and this is a graphic of that process. And this graphic is also in your notes um, because I want you to have this one. Uh, so the materials in to the chloroplast are energy, carbon dioxide, and water. They go into that chloroplast, photosynthesis occurs, the products that come out are glucose and oxygen. 
This is just a very simple uh, graphic that shows that process. And this is another graphic, less simple, a little more colorful, that shows the process of photosynthesis with a little more detail. Water absorbed from the root uh, goes up into the leaves. Light from the sun is trapped by the chlorophyll. Uh, carbon dioxide enters through the stomata of the leaves. Um, that's just another part of a, a leaf uh, structure, stomata. Uh, the carbon dioxide enters through that. And then uh, photosynthesis occurs, chemical reactions, in the chloroplast and oxygen and sugar are the results the oxygen is given off into the air because that's a waste product and the sugars are converted into starch which are more complex molecules than the simple sugars um, and those starch uh, that starch becomes stored food in other parts of the plant and that's when when you eat a, a plant a vegetable um, that starch is how you're getting that glucose um, starch turns iodine dark blue um, which is an interesting experiment that you can do at home, um, but we won't be doing that right now. All right, so plant cells capture energy, but all cells release energy. Uh, glucose and other sugars are cell food. Simple sugars are the cell food. They're the power source for cell activities in almost all living things. So when your cell needs energy, it uses glucose and other simple sugars to get that energy. Chemical energy is stored in the bonds of sugars. Those chemical bonds in the sugars, that's where chemical energy is stored. And cells release that chemical energy in two different ways. Well, the main one is cellular respiration, um, but there's also a backup way in case cellular respiration isn't working. Uh, cells can do fermentation to release energy. Okay, cellular respiration, as we learned on Friday, takes place in the mitochondria of cells. So the mitochondria breaking down the sugars to release energy, that is your cellular respiration. The starting materials in the mitochondria are sugar, or glucose, and oxygen. And the process. Glucose in the cytoplasm is broken down into smaller molecules. These smaller molecules go into the mitochondria along with oxygen and get broken down even further further. And then your products, so after they've gone through the mitochondria, gone through their chemical reactions, you are left with energy, carbon dioxide, and water. So energy is what you want from this process. Uh, carbon dioxide and water are waste products from this process. All right, so here's another simple graphic for cellular respiration, which occurs in the mitochondria. The materials that go in are glucose and oxygen, and the products that go out are water, carbon dioxide, and energy. Now, if you compare this simple graphic of cellular respiration to the simple graphic of photosynthesis that we had a little earlier, you will see that they are exactly opposite. They're exactly flipped from each other. So remember that oxygen is one of the starting products of cellular respiration. So what if your cells don't have oxygen? Can cellular respiration occur? No, it cannot. <coughs> so the process by which cells release energy without oxygen is called fermentation. And there are two types of fermentation. There's alcoholic fermentation and lactic acid fermentation. In both of these uh, types of fermentation, glucose breaks down in the cytoplasm into smaller molecules, which releases small amounts of energy. These smaller molecules then do not enter mitochondria to get broken down any further, because without oxygen, the mitochondria can't do anything. Right, fermentation is a process you might have heard of because it's in the food that we eat. Uh, for example, yeast is a microorganism uh, that uses fermentation to convert sugar into alcohol and carbon dioxide. CO2 is carbon dioxide. The bubbles of carbon dioxide cause the dough to rise. When the dough is baked, the alcohol evaporates, uh, the yeast is killed, and the carbon dioxide bubbles give the bread a light, spongy structure. So whenever you bake bread, that uh, fermentation happens, um, and yeast fermenting 
the sugars that you put in the bread. Um, and even if you don't put sugar in the bread, they, you know, they can ferment the, the carbohydrates in the flour um, into alcohol and carbon dioxide. And that's what gives bread its, its texture. Okay, cheeses and yogurt are also products of fermentation. Lactic acid fermentation is the one that's taking place in the case of cheeses and yogurt. Um, certain kinds of bacteria will convert the sugar found in milk into lactic acid. And then that's used to make yogurt, cheese, and sourdough bread. It gives it a slightly sour flavor. If you've ever had yogurt, like plain yogurt with no flavorings in it, you'll, you, you know it's sour. Um, sourdough bread is sour. That's why it's called sourdough. Um, cheeses tend not to be as sour um, because of the length of time, but um, they do have a slightly sour flavor due to the lactic acid fermentation. Uh, the buildup of lactic acid in the milk causes the milk to partially solidify, producing the creamy texture that you get with yogurt. And if it continues for a long time, the milk eventually turns into cheese. Now, if anybody uh, in class is a runner, if you've ever done any like long distance running, uh, then you might have noticed that as, as you run for a long time, your muscles start to burn. And the reason for that is that the longer you run, uh, the less oxygen your muscles are getting. Um, and when your, when your muscles lack oxygen, they will uh, produce energy through lactic acid fermentation rather than through cellular respiration. And that lactic acid builds up in your muscles and causes them to start burning. So that's um, just a, a little connection to your own lives if, you have, if you've ever done any long distance running. And that's it for um, this lecture. Um, make sure you complete your notes on page 11 and page 12 of your interactive notebook.